Welcome back. This is Minister Robert Lee Williams from Prophetic Information Ministries and God's Miracle Ministry.com. This is part two of this teaching series of releasing God's supernatural power in your life. If you have not seen the first teaching, I would encourage you to stop right now and go to see the video before this. This is a very powerful and anointed teaching that's going to help you release God's supernatural power in your life. Okay, today is uh, December the uh, 29th now, about 12.30 a.m. I just got finished doing number one, so I would encourage you to see that. But if you've seen number one, let's continue on with today's teaching. It's very powerful and anointing. You're going to be blessed by listening to this. Releasing God's Supernatural Power in Your Life, Part 2. Perfected in Weakness, 2 Corinthians 12, 9. And he said upon me, My grace is significant for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I will gather, I will rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Glorification, Philippians 3.20 For our conversation is in heaven. From whenceforth also we look for salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. Philippians 3.21 Who shall change our veiled body that may be fashioned like unto his glorified body according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself spiritual power, source of Holy Spirit, Holy Spiritual Power. 1 Corinthians 2, 4 And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and power. 1 Corinthians 2, 5 is your faith no first Corinthians 2 5 that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man but in the power of God Christ first Corinthians 1 24 but unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God Gospel. Romans 1 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation, and to every one that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek, God's kingdom. Mark 9 1. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that there be some of them that stand here, which shall not taste of death, until they have seen the kingdom of God come in power. God's word. Hebrews 4.12 For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword piercing even to the divine asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner 
of the thoughts and intents of the heart. New life. Ephesians 1.19 And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us? Usward, who believers according to the working of his mighty power. Three ways to unlock supernatural in your life. Have you ever watched people who God used in supernatural ways in your life? And think to yourself, gee, I would like to be used by God that way. Early in my walk, I watched certain men and women of God who had supernatural gifts flowing in their life and earnestly desired to be used in a similar way. Well, here are three keys I have found over the years I have been believer in Jesus, and I think I will help you release God's supernatural power in your life. One, become evangelist worshiper. Mark 14, 3 through 9. The meanings of Jesus was in Bethany at the time of Simon, a man who had previously had leprosy. While he was eating, a woman came into the beautiful alabaster jar of expensive perfume and made from essential of nard. She broke open the jar and poured the perfume over his head. Some of those at the table were ignited. Why waste such expensive perfume? They asked. It could have been sold for a year's wages and the money given to the poor. So they scorned her harshly. But Jesus replied, Leave her alone. Why criticize her for doing such a good thing to me? You will always have the poor among you. And you can help them whenever you want to. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could and has anointed my body for burial ahead of time. I tell you the truth. Whosoever in good news is preaching throughout the world, this woman's deed will be remembered and discussed. Number two, become humble enough to get your face and cry out for more. Luke 5, 12 through 13. And it happened when he was in a certain city that behold, a man who was full of the palsy saw Ashua, that's Jesus, and fell upon his face and implored him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then he put out his hand and touched him and saying, I am willing, he is clean. Immediately the leprosy left him. Here are some other examples of someone seeking Yeshua for supernatural outpouring in his life. This time the man needed a healing 
I needed to be healed of leprosy. The man was willing to break the tradition, traditional and legal boundaries of the day in order to fall on his face before Yeshua and ask for more. This man... Uh-oh, I just lost my place here. That's not good. Um, just bear with me. I just lost my place here. Okay. Oh, boy. And ask for more. Here we go. Sorry about that. But this man was hungry to be healed of leprosy. And the Son of God was right there, and he cried out to him. And he said, If you are willing, Lord. And the Lord was willing, and he healed him. In order to have God's supernatural power in your life, and pay attention. In order to have God's supernatural power in your life, you must be hungry for more than you have at the moment. They, there needs to come a holy dissatisfaction with your spiritual life as it is now. That's where I'm at. I'm not happy with my spiritual life. I want I know there's more of God and I want that. I want to be able to heal people just like Jesus did. Just as has been said to me in John 14 12. I want that. Charismatic goosebumps and small group blessing me parties have to become dry and stale and not enough to satisfy your hunger. You have to be willing to go beyond what is happening around you and seek God for more of Him in your life. That's what I'm doing by preaching you at least this message. I've got up over 250 videos here on YouTube. Because I'm hungry for more of God. And I'm by all these teachings, I'm doing what God told me to do, is to bring His people unto Him. And that's what I'm doing by preaching His Word. I'm bringing you into His kingdom. I want you to be as hungry as I am, even more hungry than I am. Because I want you to succeed in your call of God. Many people do not know the story of John Kilpatrick, who had, who was the Baptist, who was the pastor of the Brownville Assembly of God. He got tired of church as usual and started to go to the church and fall on his face asking God for a revival. In the middle of the night, he would cry out to God alone and by himself for a revival. He knew that there was more to be had by himself and others through the power of the Holy Spirit, and pressed in and persevered until... One day, the great, greatest move of God in the last 50 years broke out at his church. This man was hungry. He wanted that revival. Are you, are you a minister listening to me? Are you hungry right now? Do you want revival to break out in your church? Then you have to press in and to get that from God. And he'll give it to you. Let's continue on with the teaching. Glory be to God, because I can feel the anointing now. It is flowing, praise God. Number three, be willing to expose 
to what God is doing with others. I am not one of the believers in going from meetings to meetings, conference to conference, chasing down signs and wonders. I believe that we don't have to go and find God because God is here. However, there is a difference between chasing experiences and using a conference or a meeting to get resource, get refocused. Sometimes we are stuck in our own religious traditions and ruts that we cannot see how God is moving because we are so focused on what we don't see God doing. One of the reasons I watch different revivals that are happening around the world is so I can keep focused on what God is doing rather than what He isn't. It opens me up to more of Him. It shows me that a move from Him is possible and strengthens my faith to see God to do in my own life. This is two part of the path of humility. We always need to remind that we do not always have all the knowledge. There is to know about God and that God actually could be using people in different streams or types of Christianity than our own. Well, let's go with the number four here. I put this one in. Jesus commands us to do things. There are many commandments in the Bible. But God can and will speak to us to do things for Him. And you know that. If you're a Christian or a pastor, God does ask you to do things from time to time. John fourteen fifteen. If you love me, keep my commandments, Jesus says. John fifteen fourteen. If you are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you, if you're a friend of Jesus, you'll do what he tells you. I want to speak about myself here. Back in the year 2000, the Holy Spirit came to me personally and spoke to me with a loud voice. And this is one thing that he told me to do for him, was to bring his people unto him. This is what I am doing right now. By giving you these teachings and preachings, the word of God to you, and now is the time to bring his power to you and to the world for all of his people to see great signs and wonders and miracles and healings to his people who believe in him, Jesus Christ. My final thoughts about releasing God's supernatural power in your life in conclusion, humility is what allows the virtue. Humility is, is what allows us to venture outside the box and learn how God is moving in other places with other people. Hunger places us in a position to experience some of the realities in our own life. Humility recognizes 
that there are more to God to be experienced. Hunger causes us to do something about it. Humility honestly recognizes that there are more to God than we presently experience. Hunger is what fuels the life-longing quest to encounter and release the more. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe in me. Believe also in me. John 14, 2. And in my Father's house are many mansions. If it was not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. John 14, 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, you know, and that way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not where thou go. How can we know the way? And Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Wow. That is one powerful teaching from the Lord today. The Lord is calling you and calling me to step out into our calls of God with great power and great miracles. Signs and wonders follow them that believe. Do you believe in God? Do you believe in, in the Word of God? Do you believe in all the scriptures that was spoken unto you today? It's time for a great revival to break forth around the world today. Here in the United States, great revivals will explode again. I had a dream just the other day about a great revival at my church. I have not said anything to hardly anybody about this except to the pastor and his wife. I wrote this dream down and I gave it to them the other day. They want to talk to me about this. This is something very, very powerful. And here shortly I will share that on YouTube. You know, great healings and miracles are about ready to occur. That's why I had to get this teaching out today. Because this thing is close to exploding at any time. And God wants to lift you up. If you have been neglecting your call, don't do it no more. We don't have time for you to neglect your call anymore. It's time for you to be obedient and step out of the boat and walk toward Jesus. Be obedient unto the Lord when He tells you to do something. I'm being obedient now by giving you this message. It's, oh, what now? What time is it now? It's uh, 12.47 a.m. I'm still up. I'm getting a little tired right now. But I know that this message has to get out because it is very, very important. And I would ask each and every one of you to please pray for me and for my ministry to take off, to really take off. You know, I love you guys and I thank you for following me throughout the years that you've been following me. 
if you haven't been following me for years, go back and listen to my videos in the archives. There's a lot of teachings out there. There's a lot of information on propheticinformationministries.com and godsmiracleministry.com. You're going to learn a lot. It's going to change your life. Now, I give God all the praise, the honor, and glory for this, and all the teachings that are out there. I give Him the praise and the honor and the glory for putting these teachings together. Because He wants you to be informed. Be informed, you know, because it says in the Bible, my people perish due to lack of knowledge. Well, I'm trying to put the knowledge in people around the world. And I have people around the world that go to my prophetic information website and God's miracle ministry. You know, I love what I'm doing. I love standing in front of people. God has opened up many doors for me to blow my shofar that's here in the background in front of hundreds of people. Hundreds of people to blowing the shofar. Miracles happen. Things happen when that does occur. And there are going to be many, many more miracles that are going to be happening now. If you or anyone out there listening or hurting, and you need a prayer cloth, as in Acts 19, verse 11 and 12, you let me know, and I'll send you one out for free. If you need a guest speaker to come to your church, call me up. I'll be glad to come and preach and teach on healing of what God wants to be spoken in your church. And you'll see signs and wonders following. Great miracles are going to start breaking out on the, around the world you know, I live in the Kansas City, Missouri area. And if you live there or around there, call me up. I'll be gladly to come. And just watch what God does. Don't look at Robert Williams. You look at God, what he is doing through me and how he's using me in the ministry. I glorify God for what He has done in my life, what He has shown me all my life. I've had hundreds of dreams come to pass that the Lord may come to pass in my life. You know, it's just that the Lord was telling me, Robert, I'm speaking to you. Does God give you dreams and visions? And do you know God is speaking to you? Are you praying in some of these dreams like I am? Do you want to be used by God? Are you hungry enough to be used by God to help others? I am. I'm tired of seeing handicapped people, people who can't walk, people who have deformities, people that are being oppressed by the devil. I've had enough of this. I've seen enough for a lifetime. I have experienced pain. You know, I'm tired of it. You know, I'm now recovering from another foot operation I had on the 11th of this month. You know, I'm praising God. I'm thanking God for healing my foot. And I need all the prayer I can get. So please pray for that my foot heals, you know, immediately. I want an instantaneous healing from God. And I believe that I'm going to get that. I'm going to use all my operations as a testimony to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, 
God is so great. He is with me. He's been with me all my life. And he's been with you all your life. Have you been close to him? Do you believe in the word of God? Do you study? Do you read the Bible? You know, if you need a home Bible teacher here in the Kansas City area, I'd be glad to, to do a home Bible teaching. I've done it before and I can do it again. I love talking about the Lord. I love talking about my testimony to people. People are amazed of what God has done in my life. I like hearing stories, what God has done in your life. I'd love to hear some stories. You want to write me an email or put a video up on YouTube and tell me to go look at it and watch it, I'll go do it. Because lo I love to hear what the Lord's been doing. You know, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. You know, I've got, I, I talked to a lady just a couple hours ago, giving her more of my testimony. And this lady was amazed at what God, what I, I was telling her, what God has done in my life. I'd love to come tell you some of the amazing stories and teachings that God has given me. You know, I have a testimony about the shofar. I have a testimony about the tallit that I wear. You know, there's some people out there who don't know what a tallit is. It's a prayer shawl. Why do I wear one? Why do I blow the shofar? There's a testimony there. There's a testimony in the certificates you see right back here. I've got a few certificates. I have two ordinations up there. I've got recognitions from a ministry up there. I have a testimony. You know, God has, like I said, placed me in front of hundreds of people before blowing the shofar. You know, God, you know, I was obedient one time to God. He said he was going to send me to Texas on an adventure. He sent me on an awesome adventure. And you know, my first job when I went to Texas about, you know, what, about seven, eight years ago, I worked on the Dallas TV show with Larry Hagman, Patrick Duffy, Linda Gray. I spent nights on the South Fork Ranch. I got to hang out with all the actors and watch them film a TV show for a year. And then from there, he sent me to the Texas Rangers baseball team, where I spent two years on their security staff. That's awesome. I got to meet the oldest traveling evangelist that was alive that was 107 years old, part of the Azuzu Street Ministry, as I mentioned earlier, and I think in, in, in the first one. You know, God can open up a door for you to... Stand in front of senior ministers. Listen to their testimonies. Listen to their teachings. It's awesome what God can do in your life if you let Him. Surrender your life today into the Lord. God is calling you home. Calling you back to Him. If you've walked away from him, you may have backslidden a little, while, little bit, maybe. I've done it. I've walked away from God before, but he was always there with me. I might have been angry at God for a few things, and I knew he was there. But I come back because I knew I had a call of God, and I knew that he loved me. He cared for me. He helped me out. He's given me miracle finances. He's helped me. He's healed my body before. Let me talk to senior men and women of God 
some that's been on TV ministers, some that are on the on on news programs. I've talked to them. I've got to meet a lot of people that God has put me in contact with because I'm important to Him. I mean something to God. We are friends. Me and God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit, we're friends. We're family. And I want to bring you into the family. I want to bring you into the Holy Spirit so He can change your life. If you want that, then you stop what you're doing and you repent of your sins. You start putting on the full armor of God every day and you start pleading the blood of Jesus over you every day. You ask for protection from God. And when you give your life unto the Lord and you really mean it, He'll change your whole life around. He will. He'll change your whole life. You know, if you don't know what to say or how to give your life unto the Lord, then let me lead you in there now. Let me lead you to the Lord right now. I want you to repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I repent of my sins. I ask for forgiveness of all of my sins. And I thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for me. I thank you for raising from the dead three days later. Jesus, I want you to come into my life. I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. I love you, Lord. Thank you for dying for me on the cross. Now come live your life in me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Now, you, if you said those prayers, you watch what the Lord does for you now. Your life is going to change. The devil's not going to like it. But I don't care what the devil likes or dislikes. He's irrelevant to my, in my life. He is underneath my feet. But God is going to raise you up and going to change your life for the better. And you're going to feel good in your heart. You're going to, to you know, your life is going to change. You're going to be more happier than you've ever been. I would encourage you to find a, a Bible-believing church. A five-fold ministry church, as in Ephesians chapter 2, built upon the, the, uh, the apostles, the prophets, the pastors, teachers, and evangelists. Read Ephesians 2. That's how Jesus wants his church set up. But you find a good non-denominational church that preaches the whole word of God. If your church does not teach Ephesians 2, then get out of it and go somewhere else. We're not here to be a part of man's doctrines. We're here to be a part of God's doctrine. What does God want? What does Jesus want? Jesus loves you. And so do I. You know, if you want to be a part of my ministry, I would encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. 
visit my website from time to time and just follow me on YouTube and Facebook and you're going to be blessed follow me here on YouTube and you'll be blessed by the teaching that God gives me. You know, God, Jesus will forgive you of your sin. It doesn't matter what sin you've committed. But you might say to the Lord, I'm not worthy enough for to God to forgive me. I've done these terrible things. So have I. I've done some terrible things too. But he's forgiven me and he will forgive you. You know, there's some terrible sins out there. It doesn't matter what you've done. You know, I, I think there's only two sins that, that will not be forgiven. Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit and if you commit suicide. I think that's the only two that won't be forgiven. But uh, everything else can. You could break all Ten Commandments, and He'll forgive you. Just repent. Trust in the Lord now, because you're about ready to see some terrible, terrible things happen. You're going to see judgments come upon the world like you've never seen before, that is written in the Bible as about ready to occur. Yes, America will be judged for their sins. Their sins occurring every day. Terrible sins. And you're going to see judgment for that. You know, just for examples, the state of California, what they're doing, they're trying to do everything they can against God. And they're going to pay for that. They are going to pay from the governors to the senators to the people of California. You know, if you're, a, you know, I, I would even advise you, if you're a Christian, move out of the state of California right now. I wouldn't, I, do, I wouldn't even want to drive through the state of California. Look what's happening now. You, you've got fires all over California. That's a judgment from God. You want to make God mad? Well, you're going to pay the price. If you're a Christian in California, move out. Because there's going to be a lot more things happen to California. You know, give your life to the Lord right now. All over the world, give your life to the Lord before it's too late. Because we don't know how much time we have as an individual you know, you could die tomorrow in a car wreck. Matter of fact, my, my brother was in a car wreck today. He told his van. Because, you know, he took some medicine and he kind of passed out behind the wheel and ran into somebody. Somebody else did get hurt. You know, my brother didn't have you know insurance on his van. I'm, I'm, it wouldn't surprise me if he ends up going to jail. He's 65 years old and or 66. And got all kinds of health issues. And he might be spending a year or two in jail. I don't know. But I'm going to pray against that. So if you guys want to pray for my brother, I'd appreciate that. His name is Curtis. You know, just a couple of days ago, my ex-sister-in-law, she was involved in a wreck. Told her van out too here in the Kansas City area. You know, sure, we've had a little snow. There's a little ice out there on the roads. But nobody was seriously hurt. My two grandkids were in there. They wouldn't hurt at all, thank God, for that. But, you know, my brother needs another vehicle. He's married and, and, and got a 15 or 16-year-old daughter. They don't have any transportation anymore. You know, they happen to be very poor. And... You know, uh, I'm rich in, in God, you know. I may not have much money. I live on a small pension now. But that's going to change. Because God's going to change my life. 
I've been shown that millions of dollars are going to be coming into my ministry and into my life. That's going to happen any time now. I know it because I have faith. I believe in God. But believe in him before it's too late for you. This message is going to go all over the world. It's going to change a lot of lives out there. You're going to watch. Well, I think I'm going to go ahead and close now. It's, it's 45 minutes into the teachings, and I don't want to bore you. But I want this the message to be a blessing to you. I want it to change your life. And if you want to help donate to this ministry, I would appreciate it. If you want to help, you know, bring, you know, somebody has a used van or, or a vehicle, want to donate it, you know, I could use two in my family. My brother and my ex-sister-in-law. My daughter does live with my ex-sister-in-law and her two kids. So if anybody wants to bless us with a vehicle, I would appreciate that. You know, you just pray about it and see what the Lord puts on your heart. If the Lord tells you to, you know, donate a little bit or a lot, you can send it to PayPal or you can mail it to the P.O. box that's on the on the website. But if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do so today. And I want to thank you for watching both of these videos, the teachings on God's supernatural power. You know, I would love to just continue to talk to you as a friend, but I know that I have to close now. So, I want to thank you for tuning in and watching this. And I bless each and every one of you in Jesus' name. And I speak healing unto them, Lord, to everyone who's watching. I speak healing unto them. And I ask you to heal every one of them. In Jesus' name I pray and I thank you, Lord for everyone who watches this video. So please take these two videos, pass them around here on YouTube and on Facebook and on Twitter and whatever else is out there. But get the word out about Prophetic Information Ministries and God's Miracle Ministry. Take care. God bless you. I love you. And I can't wait to hear from you and send in your testimonies as well. God bless you. This is Minister Robert Lee Williams from propheticinformationministries.com and godsmiracleministry.com. And I'll see you on the next video.